leaning down again. <laughs> water. As we are shaking and rocking and rolling. You know, the beauty of being a Christian is that we all have a story. And it's a story that God tells. You could call it a God story. And that your God story is different than mine. It's a... story about who you are and what God has done in your life and what he has become with your life and what the story starts off as is where you were born and how you were raised and where you come from and where you were going and then somewhere along the way the story changes where God says this is where I can live and a new chapter is written in the story of your life and you become born again and suddenly you have a God story to tell. And that God story is meant to be shared with others, to tell them what you've discovered, what you've learned and how it's applied to your life and how God has invaded your life and become real in a personal way so that you can tell the story of God to other people to your family, to your friends, to your neighbors, to your relatives, to the people that you care the most about because they might not have a God story of their own. They might just be the end of the story without God. And that's a tragedy because that would be a sad ending to the story of their life. But your story, being a God story, is one of success that in the end, you win. Isn't that the way you want to be, the hero of the story? Well, God's really the hero who succeeds in causing you to become the positive ending to something that you never knew was going to happen and you had no idea of what it would end like. But your story doesn't end at the end of your life. It only just begins. So your God story as you go through it day by day, is one of learning to be the character that God wants you to be. That he's written on the pages of his book the whole scenario and complete personality of who you are going to be. The question is, are you there yet? Probably not if you're sitting here with me. We're reading Tozer. Who sets the moral pace for us today? For even hereunto were you called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. 1 Peter 2.21 The history of Israel and Judah points up a truth taught clearly enough by all history, that the masses are, or soon will be, what their leaders are. The kings set the moral pace for the people. Israel sometimes rebelled against her leaders. It is true, but the rebellions were not spontaneous. The people merely switched to a new leader and found and followed him. The point is, they always had to have a leader. Whatever sort of man the king turned out to be, the people soon followed his leading. They followed David in the worship of Jehovah, Solomon in the building of the temple, Jeroboam in the making of a calf, and Hezekiah in the restoration of the temple worship. It is not complimentary to the masses that they are so easily led, but we are not interested in praising or blaming. We are concerned for truth, and the truth is that for better or for worse, religious people follow leaders. A good man may change the moral complexion of a whole nation, or a corrupt and worldly clergy may lead a nation into bondage. The transposed proverb, like priest, like people, sums up in four words a truth taught plainly in the scripture and demonstrated again and again in religious history. The rewards of godly leadership are so great, the responsibilities of the leader so heavy that no one can afford to take the matter lightly. You know, 
one of the things that's happening at the end of the world is that though there are giant mega churches growing and there's huge ministries in this country and overseas a great revival happening there, we also see that there seems to be a falling away of the sanctity or the separation of the body of believers to develop into godly people who were seeking the Lord in all their ways for what little portion of their life that they give to God they choose to participate with him in it in their story of their life but God wants all of your life to reflect his glory so that your story would be complete and completed by him to accomplish his purposes so that you would be found holy, blameless, acceptable in his sight. At the end in the last chapter that's written in this life as we live it. What you do each day determines where you will be and how you will be. And not just the leaders that are leading you, but who you make your teacher. Jesus said an interesting thing. He said, you have no need that any man teach you, but the Spirit of God who dwells within you, he shall lead you into all truth. Now, as he leads you, then he instructs you. And as he instructs you in the word, then he guides you. And as he guides you, he provides for you. And as he provides for you, then he directs you. And as he directs you, then you have the opportunity to go in the direction that he chooses for you. Sometimes that might not be where you think it would be. Sometimes it might not be in a church you think you should be in. But if God is with you and God is directing you, then he will cause you to be filled with what you need to be that perfect example of his love and mercy and his grace in these latter days. The choice still is yours, but the reality is God wants you to be his child and he wants to lead you in the way you should go.